Senator McConnell taking new heat today and making some controversial comments about race and bringing Barack Obama into it. McConnell was responding to an NBC News report that notes that his great-great-grandfathers owned slaves, renewing questions about his stance on reparations. Now, here is McConnell bringing Obama into it. I find myself once again in the same position as President Obama. We both oppose reparations, and we both are the descendants of slaveholders. The New Yorker's Jelani Cobb is here to help us get into that and a whole lot more. It is a historical fact that Barack Obama's ancestors, if you go back far enough, did include slave owners on his mother's side. Also reports that he is a descendant of one of the first documented African slaves, also then on the mother's side. Now McConnell is facing all this and he is clearly trying to ignite or troll or excite and get people away from what you're about to see, the news that he faces a very credible challenge from a retired Marine fighter pilot, Amy McGrath. Everything that's wrong in Washington had to start someplace. Well, it started with this man who was elected a lifetime ago and who has bit by bit, year by year, turned Washington into something we all despise, where dysfunction and chaos are political weapons, a place where ideals go to die. Jelani Cobb from The New Yorker is here. Good to see you. Good to see you. You know, when we get a story like this, and this is a story, I think mm -hmm. you would agree, uh, I like having you around. Mm -hmm. uh, you are a non-pundit. <laughs> uh, and so I'm not going to ask you about mm -hmm. the Kentucky Cross Tabs poll. Mm -hmm. uh, I am going to ask you what we should make of the device that m m uh, Mr. McConnell's using and what is the substantive takeaway in your view? Okay, there are a few things. There are a lot of things um, to talk about here. One is that you know, it's obscene for Mitch McConnell to compare himself to Barack Obama in that regard. Now, Barack, true, Barack Obama is atypical in that he has a descendant, he's a descendant of slaveholders on his mother's side. But does Mitch McConnell really want to talk about how, if you're looking at the single largest grouping of people who are descendants of slaveholders, you'd be looking at African Americans because of the institutionalization of rape of black women during slavery. And so most of us could say the same, that we're descendants of slaveholders. And so... You're saying the... You're, you're observing the historical fact that if you go down this road of ancestry, black Americans... That's right. Uh, ...have to put it in Mr. McConnell's terminology, uh, the descendants of slaveholders because they were institutionally raped as part right. of sexual slavery. That's right. That's right. And so the whole uh, foundation of the question of reparations, at least as it pertains to slavery, is to repair the damage that's been done beginning there. Mm. and passing down through, through successive generations. And so, no, that doesn't get you off the hook, Mr. McConnell. And it's an obscene kind of inversion of a very traumatic and uh, morally troubling aspect of American history. He also seems to be trying to say through this, this device to the public, well, a debate over our history will get very potentially, allegedly, confusing very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but there are other... Not really. I, I think what he... he right. right. No, you don't think so, mm -hmm. and I think you make a very good point, but he's sort of trying to say that. I put up on the screen here the NAACP rating of his civil rights record. In other mm -hmm. words, history is relevant also for how we live and what mm -hmm. we do. And he has an abysmal... Uh, record on civil rights, mm -hmm. which would be a difference between him and Barack Obama in terms of what they're doing with their power in office. That's right. And also, if we're going to talk about this, like Barack Obama has inherited race as a headwind. It's something that had to be navigated in his life. And Mitch McConnell, race has been a tailwind. Mm. And when we talk about, you know, my, my friend uh, Ed Baptist in his book, uh, Half Has Never Been Told, there's a whole body of, of literature on this that historians have written about the ways in which the wealth generated by slavery has passed down successively, not just through individuals, but through institutions and corporations and so on. And so uh, when we look at these questions, it's not kind of abstract. But we can just go, oh, let's muddy the waters and we don't understand what's happening here. The moral lines are very clear. And so maybe this is an attempt to distract from uh, the, the entry of uh, Ms. McGrath into this race, but it has the potential of actually going down the roads of some very ugly historical paths that are no more beneficial to him, I don't think. 
What do you think is the message to people who want to overcome, to use mm -hmm. the, the language of the 1960s, um, but say, gosh, why are we always talking about history? Mm -hmm. We don't understand the present without talking about history. Like the, the present is the product of the past. And we don't have any problem with that as it pertains to the things that we think are virtuous about mm. this country. If we talk about the roots of the Constitution and the things that the framers were concerned about, or why there's a, a First Amendment, why there's a Second Amendment, uh, what the 14th Amendment means, all these things that we think are the hallmarks of American democracy that can be proudly shown to the rest of the world, in that case, the past is perfect. We can always import that into the present. But as when we start talking about the ugly legacy of this country, its foundational sin of exploiting Africans and nearly exterminating the indigenous population that became the basis of what we call the oldest constitutional democracy in this country, we should take a point to, to remind ourselves that democracy in this country is younger than the actual constitution. Uh, and so we're, when we're talking about the ways in which American democracy was birthed by the struggles of people who have been excluded from it to turn this into a fair assemblage of what could be called a, a democratic nation. That's then when we actually see the relevance mm. of history, and nobody wants to go there. I hope people are listening closely to you. You mm -hmm. said several important things. Mm -hmm. One of the things you just said is democracy is much younger than this country. Oh, yeah. And the, the, the nostalgia of the political movements that attach to Make America Great, mm -hmm. which was Reagan and Trump, mm -hmm. uh, imagines a time when things were much better. And that, of course, then raises the difficult question of better for whom? That's right. Because as a democracy, well, it wasn't a democracy for women for most of mm -hmm. history. It wasn't a democracy for minorities. It wasn't a democracy, obviously, for the Native Americans who were wiped out in a genocide. So at what point, then, do we have these conversations as part of the daily politics right. and news? Because they are not underneath they are actually the over organizing fight that's happening you can't have a democracy when the majority of the population is disfranchised mm -hmm. we're still having this struggle now we look at what's happening in 2016 what's uh, on the horizon for 2020 uh, and the the battles over voter access and voter suppression and all these kinds of things uh, but at the beginning, the outset of the country is very explicit and very clear. Most people who lived in this country could not vote. Uh, and so it's problematic to say that we will start uh, with the kind of halcyon days of American colonialism and we'll uh, talk about the ideals of the founders without talking about the ways in which they were circumscribed and circumvented by racism, by sexism, uh, by classism, by the, the struggles that people to this day are waging to actually have a, a, a decent shot at living in a democratic nation. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.